You guys don't need to see yet another Ender Dragon fight, do you? Not the long, slow process of finding an end fortress and then crossing across to the dragon, destroying all of the towers, very slowly agonizingly killing the Ender Dragon. Also, it can fumble around randomly in the outer aisles trying to find some shulker boxes and on Elytra, maybe. We certainly don't need to do that, do we, in another episode of Static Industry? So I'm not gonna lie, I was actually going into the end to go kill the Ender Dragon because I was hoping to find some decent loot either in the End Fortress or one of the End Cities. And well, I did get my Elytra at least, but the End Fortress was more or less a bust. I got a bunch of lower level enchants that might be useful, but I, uh, I doubt it. And then a whole bunch of just random weapons that are mostly junk as well as some armor. I did get another runic tablet in case I wanna use that big fire sword that I got to repair it until I get mending on it. But after playing with them both for a little bit the nano saber does a lot more damage and it hits very very quickly and to be fair the end wasn't much better other than the elytra really i did find some therium crystals in one of the new biomes out there and i did bring a contraption back although it's yeah it's sitting right here to grow them if i really want to because it does make some somewhat interesting looking glass. I don't know if I'll use it or not, but then other than that, it's just a whole bunch of stuff with slightly higher enchants in it for the most part, but it's still extremely questionable. So all in all, kind of a bust. So I figured since the end was going to be just a complete waste of time, we might as well go out to space, right? Finally get started on an Ad Astra and get the rocket up there and hopefully find a more interesting dimension, right? Right? That's how this works, isn't it? Except it really, really does not. And I got stymied in the very first thing I clicked open in this. I just picked one at random even, and it was the fuel refinery, which is well within our means to do. This is not complicated at all, but uh, it's the fuel bucket that you make with it. That's the problem. And long story short, we can just go back a chapter to the liquid section and it's it's this chain right here that we need to do because there's the boosted diesel bucket that we need to make it so we need to process all of those yeah so i guess we're doing distillation towers and fixing my liquid problems you know this whole mess right here that i said i wasn't gonna fix i i, I think we have to folks i'm gonna do my best to leave the paintings up but uh yeah. On the upside, we can just go make the distillation tower now, which will solve all of our problems because this is the very first step to fixing all the rest of this. Because this is mostly just a bunch of stainless steel. So much stainless steel. But other than that, this is not that hard to make. And the reality is we're going to use it to turn crude oil into sulfuric light fuel, heavy fuel, and naphtha as the very first step. And then we might have to make a couple more to handle some of these other ones. So I guess our first step is to verify that our stainless steel is a, a fairly large amount. We are over 9,000 because shortly after we start working on this, we're gonna have to start ripping out all of these machines and resetting them to use a 2 And that's gonna be problematic because this is our stainless steel line. So I guess step one here is to set up the clean stainless steel machine casing to eat up all of our stainless steel. Step two, however, is to remember that I did find a useful toy sitting in the, in the city in one of the chests, the inflatable flamingo, which lets you fly, sorta, kind of, barely. Not really, you see that bar that's slowly depleting? Yep, there we go. Very exciting. All right, so before we even get started on the distillation tower, I realized one of the first things we need to do is actually properly set up my ME network for actual purposeful use. And to do that, I greatly expanded the size and moved everything around and gave it a lot more space. Down here, we've got quite a lot more space for crafting processors. I'm still waiting on gold chips to finish that one out. And then I moved the molecular assembler block over here to give it a lot more space to grow. I will probably eventually put it on a P2P tunnel, kind of like we have for the assembler array over here for auto crafting machines to make sure it doesn't eat up too many channels. But for now, between the two things over here, we only have 13 of the 64 channels being used. I also added a trunk up here that runs all the way down to the corner so that we will be able to rip out all of the machines for the polyethylene and stainless steel assembly lines around the corner and get that straightened out, as well as running a dense trunk down into the basement where the storage system is. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of torn as to where to put the distillation towers because while the first one's only going to be four high, the biggest one goes significantly higher and we're almost certainly going to have to make this. We're talking high enough that even my slightly taller first floor won't have room for it down here. And 
if I shove this over in one of these small ones here under the stairs, because I kind of wanted it over under the blast furnaces, it's going to butt up into the ceiling here. It's going to get right up right under that ledge if I embed it down on the floor here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this block right here because this is the one I have room for, honestly. And we're going to start by feeding it out of this corner right here which comes in off of the trunk of the base. I put a line up into the ceiling up here just to expose it so I can keep track of where it is, although it's running behind the wall here down and through the floor. I moved all my controls down here. It seemed to make more sense to put them down here with the Tom Simple storage one because this is where I come to offload all of my loot anyways. So I guess let's drop this shulker full of parts down, grab everything out of here and get started on the part that I'm walking in and actually build this out. All right, that was pretty straightforward. If you come in here, much like the electric blast furnace, there's a multi-block shape. This is just by the height. If you change it to the wrong size, it just resets and tells you that it's the wrong one. Now we've got to do the part that makes me nervous and basically shut down our stainless steel line. Although to be honest, it's not explicitly shutting down the line so much as removing the crude oil from the system here and getting this entangled tank out of here and sending it into a disc inside our ME network, which we're going to need to set up in the cell workbench to take all of the crude oil, just like that. And then we can pop that into our disc drive here and immediately start watching it fill up from the drilling rig. Now we're gonna need to pull it all out of the tank at some point to fill this up, but I kinda don't wanna prematurely shut down the full line over there and deprive it of all of its resources until I know I have the distillation power working right. All right, so I gave it some power, I plugged it in with an exporter and it seems to be burbling along, noisily burbling along. And if we look up here, now we have sulfuric naphtha, sulfuric heavy fuel, and sulfuric light fuel all coming out of here, which means I need to set up these other three fluid cells and put importers onto the system. And I just tricked myself and made exporters instead of importers. That explains why this isn't working. There we go, now it's pulling everything out. And now we can see it being pulled into our inventory system slowly. Oh, you know what? I need buckets of a couple of these though still, don't I? Just the heavy fuel it looks like. All right, now with that done, we have to go do the hard parts, the parts that I'm not looking forward to here. And it's time to start rewiring this humongous mess. So I need to start grabbing all the liquids out of these tanks, moving them over to my digital storage and gutting all of the cables off of this and starting over basically. Blech. All right, it's time to bring you back in to see what's going on so you can understand what the new layout is going to be. I need to move this top layer up one to accomplish what we're gonna need to do because coming around to the back here, coming off this main trunk, we now have a P2P tunnel which will bring 64 channels down here in case I need more elsewhere in this area at some point. We're gonna remove these tanks eventually, but I need to drain the ones that still have fluid in them yet. But the general setup is going to be exporter on the back to put items and fluids in, importer on the bottom that's going to be filtered to whatever liquids need to come out of it, and then an item pipe out of the top or bottom in the case here, because it's just gonna run through the middle to extract the items. We need to do it this way because I can't extract the items using the A2 system because it's all linked together with Tom Simple Storage. It means all of those items will completely fill up the Tom Simple Storage system and disregard the limits on the drawer network. I could put void upgrades on the drawer network when that would solve the problem, but then machines that I would want to shut off when they're full won't shut off. So for now, I'm going to do it this way. But as you can see, it's slowly coming along. I have two machines done, but they're pretty much up and working again now at least, slowly, because they haven't started overclocking again yet really. All right, I've got the first bank of this now properly rewired here, and it's honestly a lot cleaner because even things like this are now pretty simple because we can just export the fluids from the import bus and put the items and fluids in via the export bus by filter. It's pretty simple now. And then we pull the items out by the item pipes, like I said. There is one problem that I've run into though. You notice how there's three machines that are shut off. One of them's not bad. 
it's the salt dust to sodium pipeline, which means we're not getting chlorine out of it, but I, I have a fairly sizable excess of chlorine right now anyway, so I think that's not a problem and a good chunk of it gets recycled. This chemical reactor, it's not off, it just runs sporadically because it, it, it takes a bit to get in. I have import and export buses in place, but there's not much I can do because of how much it makes at once. I don't think it can properly overclock. I could be wrong, I need to look into this though. And then lastly, the actual electric mixer to make the stainless steel dust. I'm perpetually out of iron dust. Because of my changes to my blast furnaces, I just constantly had it made steel without realizing I had a iron upgrade on my steel drawer. So now I have 73,000 steel ingots, which I'm not gonna complain. I mean, let's be fair, I will use that steel more than likely throughout the course of this series. That's not a problem. I'm only a couple hundred away from maxing out the drawer though. So once that happens, we should get back to production of this. And I do have a fair amount of stainless steel right now. Anyways, still being backlog waiting to be smelted. So now we need to move on to step two, fixing my polyethylene and polytetrafluoroethylene production chain so that we can finish this out. But there is one remaining problem. The bane of my existence that are cable facades because while I can do this for the modern industrialization pipes, when I make a facade for these, you notice how it does the wrong side because you can't do sided facades. So I think I'm just gonna live with this being the top and bottom bank here and just go sob quietly into a pillow because I'm annoyed but there's not much I can do there. I also have this gap here that I'm gonna be able to fill now with, I don't know, something else, where there used to be steam turbines. I'm gonna to have to figure out what to do with that too yet. Okay, yeah, check that. I figured it out like minutes into starting to clear out the next area. The chromium was slow because my hydrochloric acid production wasn't fast enough because it hadn't gotten up to overclocking yet, and the extraction had slowed down and was filling up because I hadn't added acceleration cars to the import bus to pull it out fast enough. So now we seem to be doing slightly better, and it does seem to be at least slowly overclocking now. Also, I got rid of all the fluid tanks. Yay, less mess. Okay, it took all afternoon, but I finally got everything done up through the polytetrafluoroethylene. Well, sort of. I don't have this moved yet because it had a lot of tetrafluoroethylene inside its tank still that I wanted to convert before moving it without just breaking it because this is expensive to make. But man, I am not going to understate how much work this was. This is almost three full ME drives full of fluid cassettes. I mean, yes, they're all bound to a single type each, but this was a lot to process and I had to set up a whole bunch of entangled tanks. The bottom row is incoming fluids from various places like water, salt water, and the top ones are outgoing ones that need to be piped to various machines in the floor below me. So like the ethylene and the polytetrafluoroethylene and the lithium. That said, some of the stuff that I converted, there are better ways of doing now that we have access to the distillation tower. Like specifically any of these machines that interact with the light fuel and its variants, because you can do things like convert the steam crack heavy fuel into light fuel, methane, butadine, which you don't have and benzene, which we don't have. So between that and processing the steam crack light fuel into the other things that we just made, including ethylene, as well as the stream crack naphtha into even more things, I think it's time to go set up a couple more distillation towers just to get those rolling as well. Behold, one eternity later, this this took a really long time. I, I, I don't even want to discuss it. But what we've got going on here are three more distillation towers of varying sizes going up kind of in a spiral. We've got it processing the ver three various steam crack heavy fuels. I added creation for them over here and removed the redundant machines that were creating things like methane that we're now getting out of these. Because as a reminder, these increasingly give more stuff. So the reality is we just filled out a large chunk of this grid and I apparently forgot to grab the steam crack naphtha bucket. We can just steal it from here, I guess. Oh, but that's because it was also missing the normal naphtha bucket. There we go. All right, and now we have all of this checked in, right? 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 Oh, good Lord, it's the one thing we'd actually need. And the super bad news is while this is an electric mixer recipe, it's heavy fuel and light fuel which we're busy converting into steam crack fuel up here and there's no leftovers right now. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with that. I Maybe there's a way to round robin this. Well, I've got some in here. It looks like the solution was just to add speed upgrades to the, you know, why am I just not showing you? To the distillation tower that makes the crude oil into the various fuels. We just added a whole stack to go to basically double its power intake for overclocking. So it's going significantly faster now. The important point is we now have our bucket of diesel. And I'm really gonna need to make another ME drive apparently because now we're up to four after this process. But this means that we're finally free to pursue the path to the boosted diesel bucket to make rocket fuel. We just need to combine a whole bunch more things. 
But basically we need acrylic acid, which is just processed from the propane. We need ethanol, which can be made from ethylene and sulfuric acid, so that's easy. Or we can just distill it from a sugar solution using a mixer with water and sugar. That might actually be the better option. We need to make raw biodiesel, which is plant oil, ethanol, and sodium hydroxide, these two we have. The plant oil is just centrifuging some plants, so we just need to pick a crop and just burn it all down. I have a bunch of cactus, so that will probably work fine. Then we need diethyl ether, which is the ethanol we made combined with the acrylic acid. And then biodiesel, which is just basically steam cracking normal diesel. And finally, boosted diesel, which is just biodiesel mixed with diethyl ether or diesel mixed with diethyl ether. Well, why am I just not jumping to this step here? So I don't think this is probably more efficient. Anyhow, uh, pause please while I had a whole bunch more machines again. And with this, we should be just about done. Here comes our first batch of boosted diesel. Finally, this has been a long, long day for me. Just need to put the importer on there, put in not nearly enough acceleration cards, make some more acceleration cards than I never got around to automating despite the fact that I've made hundreds of these today. Remember to click it out of the filter because it auto fills that for some reason. And then sigh in relief that we are finally finished with this. Because I'm not gonna lie, I'm glad we got it done so that we can actually move into Ad Astra, but man, if this had happened on any other week, I would not have had enough time to get this episode done. It would have been pretty bad, just time-wise, just to get everything I needed finished for the, the last couple, honestly. I've thankfully had some time off away from work and away from my kids, so I've been able to spend a lot more time on these episodes lately. Hopefully it's made an impact, but I guess uh, let's just revel in our rapidly electrical aged loot. Huh? Yep, this is it. Out of everything we got, these are the two most interesting things. The advanced alloy ingot, which I don't know if that's useful or not. And then Stormbringer, which is just, uh, I, I have no clue. Probably not as good as the Nano Sword, but uh, I mean, strictly from aesthetics, th this is pretty fantastic looking. I I'm gonna have to go enchant this, huh? The main question is how many times I'm gonna have to re-roll to get decent mods on it. Well, that's not bad for the first try, just off of looting three there. So it claims 11.5 damage. The Nano Saber claims 23.5 and hits almost instantly. So I uh, think I'm sticking with the Nano Saber, as sad as that is. Anyhow, it's been a long day for me, so I think it's time to call it here. If you found this episode interesting, entertaining, please give me a like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.